Well, as promised, I'm going to be giving you the answers and going through each of the problems for your practiced final test. I've decided to break it down into parts, so this is part one. I did that because it is pretty lengthy and I didn't want to make any of the um, videos too crazy long. So here we are. First one is a translation. We're translating TU, which is the green line segment, to T prime U prime, which is the blue one. So obviously it's telling us to drag and drop the answers, but we're not going to be doing any dragging and dropping because it's just going to be one of these. So all of them say four units, so we know it's going to be four units. First of all, four units to the right. We know we're starting here and ending here. I probably should have written start here because we always end where the prime is. So if that's the case, we know we're sliding to the right. So we're certainly not moving four minutes units down. That makes no sense at all. And we're not going to the left. So that means we've already narrowed it down to these two. And we just have to decide, are we moving 10 units up or 12 units up? Well, we are down here. We should know that T, the coordinates of T, we would run to negative three and then drop down to negative three. So that point right there is negative three, negative three. And our T prime, we would then run to here, which is one, and then jump up to nine. Now my only guess, the reason that they gave you 10 is because of this eight and the negative two. But hopefully we are paying attention and it's obvious that, whoopsie, <laughs> the lines that we're looking at are above and below the two and the 10. So therefore our answer is 12. And if we're unsure of that, we should definitely look at the difference. We always subtract. And of course, we're looking at the difference in distance on our y-axis. So we would do 9 minus negative 3. Stake change, change, cha-cha-cha. 9 plus positive 3. And that, of course, is 12. So there we go, here's our answer. Four units right and 12 units up. Next, this next problem is again, probably fairly obvious, but let's make sure. Which of the following shows a reflection over the X axis? Well, hopefully you remember that the X axis is the one that goes across. So immediately, we should be able to eliminate anything that isn't a reflection. Remember, a flat reflection is one that looks like the mirror. So we should be able to eliminate anything that doesn't go across or mirror, if you will, across that x-axis. Clearly, D does not. That's a, that's, our latent bolt is getting larger there. And A goes across the x-axis. That leaves us with B and C. And of course, when I look at B and C, only one of them is a mirror, and that would be C. B is not our answer. Moving right along. Graph the rectangle after a rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise around the origin. So we always have to remember which way counterclockwise is. Counterclockwise means we're going the opposite of way the direction of where a clock usually goes. That means we're going in this direction. 
So what we want to do is we want to look at, we'll start with any one of these four coordinates. I'm going to start with this one right here. So that point, if I run across, I'm going to hit 9, and I'm not jumping up at all, so that would be 9, 0. So in a counterclockwise counter rotation, um, moving again in this direction, so what's going to happen is that these two coordinates are going to switch places, giving us 0, 9. Okay, so that means I don't run at all, and I go right up to this point here, 9, right? Okay, so what's next? I'm going to continue doing these types of things with each of the points. I'm going to move right next to this one right here next to it. Now, I can do what I'm supposed to, which is switch the points, 0, 10 becomes 10, 0. Or I can take the one that I have already done and just move one more further, which would make it right here. So here is this part of my rectangle. Now I can continue to place these here and here, which is obviously important to do. Or what I'm going to do, because it is in fact a rectangle, is I'm going to count how long are each of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to move out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my rectangle, my new coordinates should be here and here. So let's see if that makes sense. What is this point right here? Well, if I run, I run across, and I get to 10. And in this case, I'm jumping down as if I'm jumping into a pool. Jumping down to, let's see, that's negative 8, right? Yep, I'd say so. Now... We are, things get a little bit different here because I'm rotating a little bit differently. I need to go up into my next quadrant. So I know that I need to move out that 8 and go up. That does put me right here. Look at that, that's where I am. And there I am at the 10. There we go. So I'm just gonna sketch it. You of course should use something that makes a perfectly good straight line, but essentially there it is. So the points in my new um, rectangle, the coordinates of my new rectangle are I think I already identified a couple of them, but I'm going to make sure that we know 9, 0, 10, 0. Over here we've got 8, 10, and 8, 9. There we go. Next. Which sequence of transformations could take figure P to figure Q? Now it's always important to make sure that we pay attention where we're starting and where we're ending. So P, we're starting here at P, and we're ending here at figure Q. Okay, so reflections, we're talking about reflections and translations and rotations. Well, first of all, let's talk about these rotations. Both of the rotations that are mentioned, I want to address these immediately because when we rotate 180 degrees, we start and end in, in um, quadrants that are diagonally across from each other. 
So initially that would make sense because these two quadrants are in fact diagonally across from each other. However, um, you can see that these are two units away from the origin, but this has us moving these, translating one unit right. So if I translate it to here and then moved, this one would be here. So that means this doesn't work and translate four units right, well, that would move this entire thing over to here, putting it here like that, and then rotating it, it would end up over here. So it can't be either one of those. So let me get rid of some of this that I just did here so that we don't get confused. But we know that we've eliminated C and D. So that brings us back only to A or B. So reflection over the x-axis. So remember, this is our x-axis. So if I reflect over, that would bring it down to here. Translate seven units right. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would put that point right there. So that would appear to work. If I reflected over the y-axis, that would put this one here. Wait, let me do that in a different color, just to be sure. Because the first one I did was here. This one appears to work so far. Let me do this next one in, let's say, green. Reflection over the y-axis brings it to here. And translation, three units down. Well, if I moved it down, it would end up like this. So this one cannot be right. So there we are. Choice A it is. Next, moving right along. Three congruent figures. What's happening to those? Let's see. Three congruent figures are in the coordinate plane. Oh, this is a two-part, part A, part B, if I recall. Yep. Okay. So, which statement describes a possible sequence of transformations that transforms figure one to figure two? So right now we're not looking at figure three at all. We're only looking at one and two. Okay. Well, here we go. First of all, reflection over the x-axis followed by a translation two units over. So reflection over so remember, if I reflect it, it's like a mirror. One, two, three. So it has to be one, two, three units down. So that long part would be here. Okay. Reflection over the x-axis. So that's both A and B. It does that. Followed by translations two units to the left. So two units to the left would bring it here. three units to the right brings it here. So, so far, it looks like this. A does not make any sense. Let's double check by looking at these. The rotation 180 degrees clockwise. So 180 degrees clockwise, we know that it brings it into the other, into the diagonal coordinate, diagonal quadrant, sorry about that and then a translation two units to the left. The translations two units to the right. Well, 180 degrees clockwise, if we just bring it like this, just as a quick, I'm not even measuring it, it's going to, the long, slot, the long side is gonna be down and it's going to look like that. So already both of these are wrong. So my answer is in fact B. Next part, figure three now, created by transforming figure one with a sequence of two transformations. Which one? A rotation of, a couple different rotations here. Oh, they all start with rotations, okay. A rotation of 180 degrees clockwise 
They're all clockwise. Okay, so that means they're all going in this direction. This is good. Okay, so the two rotations that are 180 degrees So again, like the last one, if it goes 180 degrees, it's going to land on its side like this. So I'm just quickly sketching this out to see if it's worth it, followed by translations two units to the left. So it can't be this because it's landing on the wrong side, followed by a reflection across the y-axis. Well, that'll make it land over here somewhere, so it can't be this. Okay. So, I am going to erase these so that they don't get in our way over here. We know that neither of those work. So now we're looking at B or D. B, rotation 90 degrees clockwise. So that means it's going to come over, still going this way, and it's going to land, let's say, should be here. Still on its side like this. Again, I'm just sketching it at this point to see what will happen to it. Followed by a reflection over the x-axis. So a reflection, remember, makes it flip, which it does here. So it could be B. Let's look at T. Rotation 90 degrees clockwise, followed by a translation three units to the right. Well, three units to the right would make it move that way, so it can't be this one. So again, B is our answer. Okay, so far so good. What's next? Marisol constructed a triangle. One angle of the triangle has a measure of 40 degrees. Another has an angle or measure of 80. Measure of the third angle. Well, we know that triangles have a total of all three angles equals 180 degrees. So, so far we have 40 plus 80 plus x equals 180. So 40 plus 80 is 120 plus x equals 180. What am I going to do next? The opposite of 120 is, of course, minus 120. So x equals 60 degrees. The answer is 60 degrees. Right? Right. Okay, next, moving right along, what do we have? Um, which set of angle measures could be the interior angles of a triangle? Well, we just talked about what we know about the in three interior angles of a triangle, right? And that they have to equal 180 degrees. Their sum is 180 degrees, right? And so, we know that this 90 times 3 is 270, so it can't be this. Well, this is already over 200, so it can't be this. I'll change up my color, I'm getting a little confused here. Um, 40 plus 60 is 100, that's 150, can't be this. Let's hope it's D or we got a problem. Okay. Uh, 15 plus 30 plus 135, 15 plus 30 is 45, plus 135 is 180. Yay! The answer is D. Nice job. What do we have next? Parallel lines. P and Q. 
intersected by a transversal r as shown. What is the value of x? Well, what do we know? We know that these two total 180, right? That is an 8. So therefore, this angle right here has to be 180 minus 30, which is 150, right? And then we know that this angle and this angle are equal. So therefore, x has to equal 150 degrees. That is a 1. All right. What do we have next? Next we have hmm, parallel lines J and K are cut by a transversal line P, creating these angles. Determine which angles must be congruent, meaning the same size, to angle X. So which angles are the same size as X? Well, we know from the last problem that we just did that 4 is the same size. And we also know that vertical angles are the same size. So therefore, we know that we've got angles 3, 4, and 7 as our answers. Next. Okay, let's see. We've got Monisha making a quilt with this lovely pattern. I'm sure that it will be different colors and be beautiful when she's done. If all the horizontal lines are parallel, what is the value of x? Okay, so this, of course, right here is 180 degrees, right? So we know we can write a nice, wonderful, beautiful equation that says x plus 3x plus 20 equals 180. And then we follow all of our steps for solving an equation. There's that ninja 1 in front of the x. I box these in. I've got 1x plus 3x. That's 4x's plus 20 equals 180. I ask, what's the opposite? Of course, what's the opposite of plus 20? That's my, uh oh, that's not what I wanted to use. That is the silliest thing ever. Okay, let's try that again. I want this. What's the opposite of plus 20? That's minus 20 on both sides, because I have to keep it even. So it leaves me with 4x equals 160. What's the opposite of divide by, I mean, the opposite of times 4? That's divide by 4. And therefore, x equals 40. And there, of course, is my wonderful answer. x equals 40. Beautiful. Next, moving right along, this probably was one of the more challenging problems in here, but certainly more than doable because you just had to put together the different things that you knew. Same thing with the, the next one. Again, you simply had to put together the fact that you knew, or you should have known or had in your notes, that these two interior, opposite interior angles are equal. So we have um, 2x equals 4x minus 30. If you did it in the other way, you had 4x minus 30 equals 2x. Same thing, because it's an equal sign. They can go either way, right? Mm -hmm. um, so again, we just sit, set them up equal to each other. And now we say to ourselves, well, we need to get the x's together on one side. We can't leave nothing on one side. That's silliness. So to get these four x's onto the other side, we need to take them away from here. 
and put them over here. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side. These cancel, 2x's minus 4x's gives us negative 2x equal to negative 30. Now I say to myself, what's the opposite of times negative 2? That is, of course, divide by negative 2. Those cancel. I'm left with x equals 15. Um, find the value of x. That was my question. x equals 15. And look at that. There it is. The answer is A, 15 degrees. So far, so good. I think we only have one more question left in part one. That will be this one. Parallel lines K and M are intersected. So here are my parallel lines. I'm actually going to do this. These are the parallel lines. Okay, just to make them stand out. I'm going to have to do this. I'm just doing this to help us. Oh, yucky, that's awful. There we go. Okay, the diagram shows the lines and measures of some angles formed by the intersection of the lines. They intersect at point R. Okay, there it is. There's point R. Based on the diagram, what is the value of X? So my goal is to find the value of this angle right here. Okay, so what do we have going on here? Let's see. So we know we've got some vertical measures right here. So that makes this 80. We also know that this entire thing is 180. So 40, 40 here plus 80, that would be 120. That would make this 60. More vertical lines, that would make this 60. And another vertical, not vertical lines, vertical angles, that would make this 40. Okay, so um, back to my parallel lines, and oh, here's my, look at this, I already see my alternate interior angles, which would make x equal 60 degrees, and it looks like I have answer C, 60 degrees, and that is it for part one. See you in part two.